Hi guys, it's RLC321 back again. Um, this time we're going to be covering about uh, masking. Now, I, you can, we can, we've got, we've got some of the tools here for that we're going to be using for, for masking. Toothpick is a must. Always have a toothpick handy. Um, if you need something a little bit thicker than toothpick, uh, this I've got from my daughter's toys screwdriver just in case you you, you need it you, uh, we won't be needing it for these parts but just in case sculpting tool again to help go get into all the nooks and crannies and crevices that maybe the toothpick can't reach or failing that even a hobby knife um, I've also got this here which is a new blade because we're going to be doing very doing cuts on with this and we want a nice new blade because we don't want any problems to come and here is Tamiya Tamiya's own masking tape which is a very low tack tape and ideal for model kits so we'll be using that a lot now you, you can you can use something like this as well but what if you do decide to use this is just do this to it get a lot of the sticky off as much as you can because this isn't as low tack as the the Tamiya stuff and just by doing this it makes it slightly better to work with it's ideal if you're going to be covering really big pieces All right so normally I would have some blue tech on here as well but I can't seem to find it because the blue tech also works as a good Masking for masking small piece small areas and things like that, but we haven't got that. I haven't got it anyway. So I hope you've all had a good new year, and you guys are not all too hungover because it's actually New Year's Day that I'm recording this on. So let's put that there. Let's put the old blade in here. Now what I usually do with the old blades, I, I put them back in here and then so I know that this is an old blade, obviously I would fold it up just like this. Then before I throw it out I would wrap it up with a couple of layers of duct tape and some normal packing tape, you know, safety first because even though bin men they're still you know, we, we don't want them getting hurt either. Right, so let's put this new blade in. There we go. Right, so these are our tools and our parts that we're going to be masking. Now you're probably thinking, why have I got these parts here? Because these, surely these don't need masking as well. No, they don't. But I'm going to anyway. Because what I'm going to do, I want this part here. Let's get my toothpick, it'll be easier. Right. I want this part here to be grey, but then also I want it to go down just ever so slightly at this angle as well. And the same along this side. Go down on that angle. I want all of that, all of that to be the grey colour. This, we've got two of the same pieces here. But I only want one of these to be painted grey and not the other side, like you, like you see on some of the. Where's that disappeared to? Oh, there it is. Um, like you see on some of the Bandai kits. Um, as I said earlier, we, I want this side to be grey, the rest is going to be white. So that's not too much of a problem. And. Now this is going to be the fun one because I might change this up a little bit I was originally just going to have just down to here this part grey and then just this little part here grey which I can't actually you know I'm, I'm still going to do that I'm not going to worry too much maybe that part as well 
this is definitely going to be grey here and this part here and um, but this part if we get in close whoops right this part right it goes underneath here so I'm gonna have to mask off this part as well but then it goes all onto here so I need to put a little bit of masking actually no I can I can leave that because I can hand paint that a different colour later so just mask these parts off so then I'll have all of that bit grey and then obviously that bit grey as well but yeah that's what we're going to do so let's get started we'll start on something fairly easy we'll get our Tamiya masking tape if I can find the edge and what I'm going to do I'm just going to lay it down on here you need a nice clean surface to work on obviously if you're going to do this and just give it a nice slice there now we don't want two thicker pieces two not two thicker pieces but long pieces we only want it fairly fairly thin so that we can apply the parts to it now here is where I want to start Start doing it now. I do apologise if I'm trying to keep everything in focus as much as I possibly can. So there, and we fold that under there. So that's one. And oh, but it's going to be a pain in the ass. I can see it now. That bit goes just there. And the last part. Last piece. Come on. It's a very tedious and time consuming aspect of the hobby masking. Um if I can get away with not doing it I will but because I want this kit to look really really amazing and hopefully you guys that are following along and doing a similar sort of thing we want your kits to look amazing as well right, so let's just move that down a little bit there and there we go so there's that bit and now I just want one more piece to cover that because I want this part to be grey you see then if we get there, I mean, hopefully, when we airbrush, we shouldn't overspray too much. But just to be on the safe side, if we do, we've pretty much covered it. So there's that part masked up. Then we do one more. Then I'm gonna pause the camera just need to move the camera over just a bit so I can get my knife in I'm gonna pause the camera and then we I'll mask the rest of it because you don't need to see the whole thing of being masked because you be here forever you don't really want to be here forever and I'm just gonna mask this part just so you can see what goes in into it now I don't want any gaps in here because the under spray will get into that as well. So this is where the toothpick comes in handy. You push your toothpick down into there and as you can see it's now covered that part so it's not going to get any overspray. Um, let's get the other part. Now you can use either your knife or a toothpick to mask these off. It's really hard trying to do this on the 
the camera as well because I'm trying to have to get it close so I could see where the masking tape is. And two more pieces should do it. There, not quite. There. there we go, that'll do. Fold that under. Now, what I also want to do on this part, I'll show you what I'm going to do in a second. Right, hang on, let's put this over this part just like that and again just going to use my toothpick just go down here push it in fold that bit over there off that little tiny bit so this is the the problem with, with masking it's such a tedious job now I want this bit to be grey as well so you can see here I've got my bit of masking tape over this is why you need a really sharp blade so I'm just gonna go right into the edge and very very lightly just score along that area I don't want to cut into the paint, I just want to cut into the paper. And hopefully, there we go. Come on, get off. There. Let me just cut just a little bit along there. There we go. And so now, that down a bit more. I've got the underside here covered because I want that to be to be white. I just need to mask off this part only a little bit actually. And you need to mask a little bit off. So how much are we talking about? It's about there, give or take. It's not an exact science, obviously. So take that bit off. And I'm just eyeballing it. Any more or less I can always just that out. It doesn't have to be one hundred and fifty percent perfect. Push that down and wrap it over. Now this part needs a little bit of a snip in, so I can push that bit down there. Okay. Now I need to do a very again another very gentle easy cut. You're very lightly because you just want to score the paper you don't want to score the paint so hopefully if this has worked and it has let's get a bit of paper off there we go so oh no, hang on not yet got a, still got a piece there that I need to mask up There we go. Okay. So they're the two pieces now masked up, ready to be painted. So I'm going to stop the video here, continue with the, the masking process. Some of the pieces you'll see are going to have the larger.
the larger one on because obviously there's larger pieces to cover up whereas the others are not and this masking tape, the Tammy masking tape is brilliant for this now one thing I will mention is obviously bleed you have to be very careful with bleed through on this um, it will happen there's nothing that you can really do about it to stop it let's just cover up a little bit more if I've got a little bit of extra stuff there yeah. there you go just to protect that a bit more there um, it will happen it can't be helped but anyway let's just move this over here a little bit more make it easier um, yeah so I'm gonna cut away now and I'll be back once all of these parts are masked. It won't be long. Hi guys, right back again. As you can see, I've now masked off all of the parts that I want to be grey. Um, <laughs> so, as I say, you can see where I've actually masked off and the parts that I want greyed out see there um, here as well because I want all of that part grey oh hang on this is starting to come unstuck here now when we in a few minutes we're going to go over to the painting booth so I can start painting it all there you can see here now I use it obviously you can see I've used the bigger masking tape to cover up just the bigger pieces because I'm Hopefully, I shouldn't have too much overspray, and so there's pieces where I cheated a little bit. Um, like here, for example, I'm not didn't do the undersides all the way because I'm only doing the top half. You know, so just there and there. I'm not doing in there and, and it's just the top half here and here. That's all I'm all I'm doing with it. Uh, I need to push that down just a bit more. There we go. There. So, and that's this part here. Right. So, I'm gonna pause it here, and I'm gonna go over to the spray booth and spray the grey on. So, just bear with me a minute while I set everything up over there. Okay. Be back in a minute. Oh, welcome back, guys. All right. Now we're going to be painting these parts. I'm just preparing the my grey paint. It's a, as I said before, it's the Tamiya acrylic paint. Now I don't need an awful lot of this. Just enough. So I think about there will do. I say, don't need a great deal of it. And let's wipe that off there. Now, obviously, again, this is going to be a bit too thick. I mean, I don't have ratios of how to thin my paints. Um, I mainly just eyeball it and go by what looks about right. And to me, that should be fine. I'm right, just going to give it a quick mix, make sure I've got everything and it's all mixed up properly. Give a bit of a blowback. Right, and give it a spray, see what that looks like. Make sure it's covering fine. Yep, okay. I'm right, going to put the fan on. And we're going to get our very first piece. And again, light dustings as usual, like we've done before. Let the light dusting sit.
with a nice light light coat and then hopefully I hope this works guys <laughs> I'm not a very good not very good at um, masking things off let's put it that way I tend to get bored really quickly and easily very light dusting because we're going to be going over it again in a minute anyway once this is dried up oh I do apologise it's not even in shot guys let me just move this camera just a little bit there and that's better One last piece. Okay, right. So the light doesn't just give it a few minutes to to dry off. Just gonna fill up some more of my paint. So it's run out. Right, so let's go back to the parts. They should be fairly dry now to do a to complete our um process and as you can see Ken constantly moving the parts don't keep it in one spot you keep it in one spot that's where you're gonna get the pooling and things like that which we don't really want Now, with this grey, I am not too worried about the tree shading coming showing through because it will show through on the rest of the parts anyway. And so it will still look good. I just hope this grey is going to look good with it. <laughs> I suppose we'll soon find out. You know, if you can have some of the pre shading show through, even better. If not, it doesn't matter. So these are just accent highlights more than. Not, not highlights, just to give it a bit more visual texture than anything else. That's the right word. And one last piece. There. Right, so that's it. Um, I'll come back with uh, another video once this is all dried off and show you what the parts look like. Be back soon. 
Okay guys, it's uh, obviously 3 to one back again. Here we are. The parts should now be dry enough for me to start taking them off. So I'm going to just take them off the off of this and put them on my mat. And then we can have a look and see what they look like. Now obviously you probably won't see the full effect of them until this this whole piece has been put together. But obviously that's not going to be until we're completely and fully done. Because we've still got loads, loads to do on this model kit. Um, there's not only, I've still got to, you can probably tell from the the background there, I've still got loads to do. I've got the legs up on the, the airbrush bench ready. Well, one part of the legs. Which, which leg is it? The left leg that needs to be pre-shaded and I've got all of these parts here that still need to be pre-shaded so it's not ready yet so I think from after this video until the rest is done there's going to be a, a good few days before you get to see the next video because I want to get the rest of it done so I'm all ready just to start putting things together right okay so let's see if I can change the angle on this a little bit there we go all right so what now when you are, we are taking these apart you need to be very very careful and always do it nice and slowly do not try and rush it because if you rush it you could peel the paint off and if you peel the paint off, then all of your hard work was for nothing. It's just down the tube, wasted. So just do it very, very gently. And in theory, hopefully, everything should just pull off nicely. And where are you? get my toothpick here underneath this yeah, and you don't want to use anything sharp at this point to pull the paper off because that could damage the the paintwork so let's see what we can see There, there we go. That's one part. Let's get up, and, and that might be a little bit too dark, but I'm kind of liking it. To be fair, it's, it doesn't look too bad at all. There's hardly any overspray. We've got a little teeny tiny bit of overspray right there, but it's hardly noticeable, so I'm not worried about that. So that's looking good. Let's see what else is there this pipe. So we're going to use a toothpick on these parts instead of something metal. And again, just very slowly pull everything back and there. That's that part. Let's get it to his counterpart. See what it looks like. Come on. Oh. go right let's see what this and this looks like together I'm not going to put it fully together because I've obviously I've still got the, there's a gold piece that's supposed to go in there but there you go that's what that looks like 
and I think it's I think it looks pretty good it's different so I can leave that like that let's take a look at this pipe which is where I made my own kind of um, leading edge sort of thing because obviously this pipe didn't have any anything on there I just wanted it to be different to what you, it would normally be like yeah, that's not too bad you can see there it's not too, I mean it's not perfect but I don't want it to be perfect so, you know even a proper mobile suits are not perfect well actually yes they are they're friggin awesome come on This is where nails come in handy. Oh. Typical. And the other thing is, don't use the nails like I'm doing, because you could accidentally scrape off the paint. And right, there's that part, which again, it doesn't look too bad. And as I say, it's not perfect, but hey. It doesn't matter. As long as you, whatever you do with your models, however you paint it, whatever you do to it, as long as you like it, that's what's important. And uh, that's the ho whole point of building these kits is you, you're putting all this this time and effort in, and it's your model, not anybody else's. Come on, get off there. Is that part? I mean, I might put some of these this together and no, no, sure. Well, I can't put it together yet, just because there's things we need to do to this model um, before I put it together. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, where's the other part to that? Oh, there it is. Right, just a is an example. It's the white and the grey and basically they're going to be on the kit looking like that which doesn't look too bad um, yeah because I mean now I've done this what's going to be next is putting a gloss coat onto the model one that will help protect the paint and two, it's prepping the model ready to be panel lined. Come on, uh, ready to be panel lined, and then decaled. And that's what the gloss coat is going to be for. But obviously, um, I want to do the rest of the kit, get the rest of the kit painted up in that first before the even attempt to do that so these are just going to be set aside waiting ah oh, shit now I don't know if you can see so I can get it right up close here come on zoom in you know you want to I've accidentally Need a boo boo right here. Um, come on. There. Now you can see. You can see where I scratched the paint by accident. Luckily, this is not going to be seen that much, so it's not too much of a big deal. So, 
that's why I say you always be very careful. You know. There we go. Let's have a look at some of these bigger parts here. Let's see. just a very not it's not subtle actually it's not subtle at all but it does add a bit of visual texture to the model kit mm. ah and it stuff gets everywhere now I'll be a hundred percent honest normally I would would have waited at least 24 hours before I started taking this tape off but with that the white masking tape if I left that on there that could potentially pull up any paint with the Tamiya one it, it's not too bad so as long as it's touch dry and it's not tacky then you should be fine Right now this bit. Again, just go very, very slowly. And now here, let's pull this. And this is the other really tedious bit when they just don't want to come off at all. There we go. There's that part. And I know that is going to be sitting on here like that. So it's definitely going to be looking interesting to say the least and this last piece which I'm really looking forward to because this um, actually this is the back shoulder part not the front I thought it was the front Got a little bit of paint left in here as you can no I haven't no 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 that's supposed to be there no it's all good very carefully This tape sticks to people like glue, but it doesn't like sticking to the model, which is good. That's because that's what we want. We don't want it to actually... And there. And there's that part. Again, you can see right here... If I can get it to zoom in. You can see right there you've got a little bit of white sticking up. And a bit of dust mark on, on there, but that's not, I'm not worried about that. Um, but, as I say, that's how you use masking tape to mask off the areas. Um, let's grab this here, just put that in there. That's what that's going to look like there this part is 
gonna be in there. Just, uh, there. Oh, and then this. Now you can see why I wanted to do just the top part. And I put this on. Come on, it's not gonna go on fully properly, obviously, but. But there. You can see why I wanted to do that top part. So it all goes in almost symmetrical, but not quite symmetrical. But you get the idea. Oh, I don't know if that was even in shot then. I do apologise. But yeah. That's it. So that's how you do use the old masking tape. Um, if I had smaller parts that needed to be masked, I would use uh, blue tack, but I don't have any blue tack at, at the minute. and No one normally do. The other reason why we are waiting as well to, to gloss all the parts is one to protect the paint because if I keep handling it too much the my fingerprints are gonna go all, all over the paint and it's not gonna protect it so we're gonna gloss once I finish with everything else and get everything to the stage I'm at now on on this arm then I will be back with the rest of the tutorial Okay then guys, this is uh, RLC321 saying goodbye and I'll speak to you soon. Take care.